Can you believe it's been over a decade and a half since the world was introduced to the revolutionary first-generation iPhone? And now, as we stand at the threshold of a new era marked by the launch of the iPhone 15 series, there couldn't be a more perfect moment to reminisce about the phenomenal journey of the iPhone. This is the remarkable story of the iPhone's progression. After months of rumors and speculation, Apple CEO Steve Jobs unveiled the first iPhone on January 9, 2007. The device, which didn't actually go on sale until June, started at $499 for a 4 gigabytes model, $599 for the 8 gigabytes version, with a two-year contract. It offered a 3.5-inch screen, a 2-megapixel camera, and one plaudits for the then-new multi-touch features. Critics, however, said the phone was too expensive to do well in the market. On June 9, 2008, a year after the original iPhone went on sale, Apple rolled out its successor, the iPhone 3G. The new model could connect to faster 3G-based networks, included built-inch GPS, offered more storage, and was cheaper. Selling for $199 for the 8 gigabytes model, $299 for the 16 gigabytes version, the iPhone 3G was available on July 11th and offered something called Location Services. Location Services is going to be a really big deal on the iPhone, said CEO Steve Jobs. It's going to explode. Again at WWDC, Apple's Steve Jobs announced the next iPhone, a faster version called the iPhone 3GS. Although the form factor was unchanged from the previous version, the new iPhone was twice as fast as its predecessor and ran iPhone 3.0. The 32 gigabytes iPhone 3GS sold for $299. A 16 gigabytes model went for $199. An 8 gigabytes iPhone 3G was also offered for $99. The iPhone 3GS was available June 19, 2009. The redesigned iPhone 4 arrived on June 7, 2010 in tandem with the newly renamed iOS 4 and marked the arrival of FaceTime video chat. Prices remained unchanged, $199 for a 16 gigabytes model and $299 for the 32 gigabytes version. It went on sale on June 24 and heralded the arrival of the first high-resolution retina screen. Once you use a retina display, you can't go back, said Steve Jobs. In a change of pace, Apple unveiled the iPhone 4S on October 4, 2011, a few weeks after Steve Jobs stepped down because of health issues. New CEO Tim Cook talked up the new phone's dual-core processor, the same used in the iPad 2, and said the 4S would go on sale October 14. In addition to the usual 16 gigabytes and 32 gigabytes models, Apple also unveiled a 64 gigabytes version that sold for $399. The iPhone 5, the first version to have a 4-inch screen, arrived on September 12, 2012, as CEO Tim Cook touted the faster, slimmer upgrade to the iPhone 4S during a 90-minute presentation in San Francisco. This is the biggest thing to happen to iPhone since the original iPhone, he said, referring to the first-gen smartphone Steve Jobs had launched in 2007. The iPhone 5 hit the streets on September 21, Prices for the 16 gigabytes, 32 gigabytes, and 64 gigabytes models were unchanged. On September 10th, 2013, Apple CEO Tim Cook rolled out not one, but two iPhones. The upscale iPhone 5S, now in gold in addition to the usual white and black, and the colorful, less expensive iPhone 5C. The iPhone 5C was basically a reskinned iPhone 5. The iPhone 5S got a faster, 64-bit A7 SoC system on a chip, Touch ID, and a new motion data processor touted as the foundation for a new wave of health and fitness apps. The iPhone 5C started at $99 for a 16 gigabytes model. The iPhone 5S started at $199 for the same amount of storage. Both went on sale September 20th. For the second year in a row, Apple unveiled two iPhones in 2014, the iPhone 6, which has a 4.7-inch screen, and the iPhone 6 Plus with a 5.5-inch screen. Both iPhones sported new A8 processors that were faster and more efficient than the previous year's models. Both also had upgraded cameras and were NFC-ready for access to the new Apple Pay network that rolled out in October. Although the iPhone 6 was priced the same as 2013's iPhone 5S, 
The Plus model was $100 more. Apple's iPhone 6S and 6S Plus represented meaty upgrades to the 2014 models on which they were based. The 6S and 6S Plus got new Force Touch technology called 3D Touch, as well as a beefed-up 12-megapixel EyeSight camera that shot 4K video. The 5-megapixel FaceTime camera was also new and was designed to take better selfies. Both phones ran on a faster A9 chip, and they went on sale September 25, 2015. Apple also added a new color, rose gold, to the lineup. The 6S started at $649, and the 6S Plus at $749. In 2016, Apple broke tradition by not introducing a major redesign of its flagship phone. Instead, the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus, announced on September 7, 2016, refined the iPhone 6S design, with notable changes including the removal of the headphone jack and the introduction of water and dust resistance. Both models featured stereo speakers, a faster A10 Fusion chip, and improved camera systems, with the iPhone 7 Plus boasting a dual-camera setup enabling portrait mode and optical zoom. The iPhone 7 started at $649, while the 7 Plus started at $769. A year later, on September 12, 2017, Apple celebrated the iPhone's 10th anniversary, with the announcement of the iPhone 8, 8 Plus, and the radically redesigned iPhone X. The iPhone 8 and 8 Plus maintained the design lineage of the iPhone 7, but introduced glass backs for wireless charging. They were powered by the A11 Bionic chip and enhanced camera systems. The iPhone X, pronounced iPhone 10, featured a nearly bezel-less OLED screen, Face ID facial recognition technology replacing Touch ID, and a unique notch design. The iPhone 8 started at $699, the 8 Plus at $799, and the premium iPhone X set a new pricing standard, starting at $999. 2018 saw the continuation of the iPhone X design. On September 12th, Apple introduced the iPhone XR, iPhone XS, and iPhone XS Max. The iPhone XR featured an LCD liquid retina display and came in a variety of colors, aiming at a more budget-conscious segment, while the iPhone XS and XS Max boasted Super Retina OLED displays, improved dual camera systems, and the powerful A12 Bionic chip. The iPhone XR started at $749, the XS at $999, and the XS Max began at $1,099. Finally, on September 10th, 2019, Apple unveiled the iPhone 11, iPhone 11 Pro, and iPhone 11 Pro Max. The iPhone 11, succeeding the iPhone XR, featured a dual camera system, improved water resistance, and the A13 Bionic chip. The iPhone 11 Pro and Pro Max, successors to the XS and XS Max, featured Super Retina XDR OLED displays, a new triple camera system including an ultra-wide lens, and improved battery life. The iPhone 11 was priced starting at $699, the 11 Pro at $999, and the 11 Pro Max at $1,099. Apple brought back the SE branding in early 2020, just as the coronavirus pandemic unfolded, blowing heavy hits to the economy, and the phone was an instant success. Priced at $400 and powered by the latest at the time, Apple A13 chip. It was far more powerful than any Android phone in that price range. But the new iPhone SE 2020 wasn't quite as tiny as the original 4-inch SE. Instead, it actually uses an iPhone 8 chassis, so you got a 4.7-inch screen. The single camera on the back was capable of recording 4K videos with great quality. And while others also offered an ultra-wide and sometimes even telephoto lenses at this budget, the new SE did stand out with quality of its single lens. The biggest complaint about this phone is to this day the battery life. Having a tiny 1800 mAh battery inside meant that if you used your phone a bit more during the day, you would need to recharge it even before you get home from work, which is definitely not a great experience. In late 2020, Apple for the first time launched four iPhones at pretty much the same time. After years of sticking with similar designs, the 12 series featured a complete refresh in the looks department. Flat sides, thin bodies, 
and a brand new super compact form factor with the iPhone 12 mini. All four 12 series iPhones come with 5G connectivity, a first for any iPhone, and just as you'd expect from Apple that was handled smoothly with support for millimeter wave in the US, as well as a clever feature that would automatically switch back to LTE networks when 5G ones were not available to conserve battery life. Also, all four now feature OLED displays with beautiful, rich color and deep blacks, while previously the more affordable iPhone 11 model, for example, compromised on that with an LCD screen. The iPhone 12 is currently the best seller in the series, but the Pro iPhones, which stand out mostly for their telephoto cameras and advanced camera features like RAW capture, also sell well. Despite a global chip shortage, Apple launched its iPhone 13 series on time with all four models launching at the same time. The series have not changed and follow the same recipe with a mini 5.4 inch model, two 6.1 inch iPhones, and one 6.7 inch Pro Max model. The big upgrade in the 2021 family of iPhones is without a doubt the battery increase. All four iPhones ship with bigger batteries than their predecessors with the difference ranging from a 10% increase in the Mini to a nearly 20% battery capacity increase in the Pro Max. This has resulted in significant battery life gains with the iPhone 13 Pro Max in particular securing the title of the longest lasting iPhone ever. On the camera front, Apple introduced photographic styles, a way to control the color and contrast of all of your photos, and unlike a filter, you could create a custom look for every photo you take, and it would be applied automatically. All four iPhones also come with cinematic mode, which records full HD video where the background is blurred and the camera can automatically rack focus for a cinematic-like effect. The consensus in the community is that cinematic mode is cool, but suffers from some artifacts and is not quite fully polished, but can be fun to use nonetheless. The iPhone 13 series also brought brighter screens for an easier outdoor use experience, and the infamous notch got 20% smaller. With the bigger batteries, the phones also got physically a bit thicker and heavier too. Two years after the release of the second generation SE, Apple was ready to introduce a new member to the family, the iPhone SE 2022. There weren't any high hopes or much hype for this iPhone before the launch, and it was mostly a modest update. The new SE came with the same form factor as the previous iPhone SE, and that design dates back to 2014 and the iPhone 6, so it definitely looked ancient at launch. The problem most reviewers quoted, however, was the small for the Times 4.7-inch screen that also happens to use the older LCD technology and has a lower than average resolution. On the flip side, Apple equipped the SE 2022 with the Apple A15 chip, this was not only the fastest processor in a budget phone in 2022, it was the fastest processor on any phone, period. Teardowns also revealed a surprising 10% bump to the battery capacity, unexpected considering the unchanged form factor. This was also the first budget iPhone with 5G connectivity. And while the modem did not support millimeter wave, it had the far more important C-band frequencies for wide coverage across the US. Finally, all of that came at a slightly higher $430 starting price. Apple killed the Mini from its iPhone series and replaced it with the total opposite, a large 6.7-inch iPhone 14 Plus. So the iPhone 14 lineup consists of an $800 iPhone 14, a $900 iPhone 14 Plus, a $1,000 iPhone 14 Pro, and a $1,100 iPhone 14 Pro Max. For the first time ever, the non-pro versions don't get a new processor and use only a slightly upgraded version of the Apple A15 chip used last year. The iPhone 14 Pro editions do get the new Apple A16 chip, so there is a bigger gap between the vanilla and the pro versions this year. The design remains mostly the same on the regular version, but there are bigger changes on the pros. The notch is being replaced by the Dynamic Island, a pill-shaped camera module. It bubbles and pops with notifications and alerts, and is just so well animated and fluid, and such a clever idea. And yes, it still supports Face ID. The other big news is that the Pro models get an upgrade to a larger sensor, 48 megapixels main camera. Cinematic mode now works in 4K too, and supports both 24 and 30 FPS. Battery life and charging speeds, however, have not changed in any meaningful way. September 13, 2023 marks the end of the lightning cable era, 
Many might find themselves reminiscent of the times when several devices relied on it. Indeed, the whole iPhone lineup this year, encompassing the iPhone 15 and Pro models, has transitioned to USB Type-C connectivity. In terms of display features, Apple maintains the tried-and-true screen dimensions it established in recent models. The fundamental iPhone 15 and its Pro counterpart sport 6.1-inch displays, while the larger Plus and Pro Max versions offer expansive 6.7-inch screens. A remarkable enhancement in this year's series is the incorporation of the Dynamic Island display cutout. First introduced in the previous iPhone 14 Pro across all the new models, Furthermore, the iPhone 15 unveils a refreshing aesthetic with smoother, rounded edges. Delving deeper into the camera specifications, the iPhone 15 series introduces a formidable 48 megapixels primary camera. However, it's within the Pro variants where the camera system truly shines with innovative advancements that are bound to entice photography enthusiasts. Particularly, the Pro Max version promises a tantalizing experience with its significantly enhanced 5x telephoto zoom lens, offering a 120mm focal length equivalent, a noticeable leap from its predecessor, and the 15 Pro's 3x zoom. Adding a new page to the iPhone's user interface, the iPhone 15 Pro bids goodbye to the traditional mute switch, replacing it with a versatile action button. This intuitive addition allows for rapid access to several functions, including the camera and flashlight, along with personalized shortcuts triggered by a press and hold gesture, enhanced with haptic feedback and visual signals from the dynamic island. Under the hood, both Pro models are equipped with the groundbreaking A17 Pro chip, which brings the capacity for ray tracing graphics, promising a revolution in mobile gaming. Apple hints at the potential for high-end games such as Resident Evil Village and the upcoming Assassin's Creed Mirage to run natively, taking the gaming experience to unprecedented heights. From the first model to the iPhone 15, the technology continued to impress us year after year. What do you think about the latest iPhone model, and which one do you think was the most iconic? Leave a comment in the section below. That's all for today, dear technology friends, and I hope to see you in the next video.